All right, so to this problem, it says the first thing we got to do is it says the course of boat starts at point A. So I'm going to write A. Done. And then it said proceeds in the direction. Ooh, uh oh, I have a bearing, right? So remember what I said when you have a bearing? Whenever you have a bearing, you want to create your cardinal directions. So I'm going to redo point A. I'm going to say, all right, here's my north, east, south, west, and now here's A. Right? Because I'm talking about bearings. Then it says that's going to go south, 53 degrees east, right? The first, first tells you the direction to start, and then you're going to go 53 degrees east. And then you're going to do that for some distance, so we don't know, to point B. So I'm going to go south, 53, so, so there, and we'll call that B. Um, and then this angle is your 53 degrees, right? Make sure you're labeling this. This is in standard form, right? This is from a bearing. Then it says, then the direction from there is south 39 degrees west. Well, again, I have another bearing, so I'm going to create my northeast southwest. So I'm going to do south 39 degrees west to point C, which it lies eight miles directly south of point A. So basically, I need to kind of come back down here. So we're going to say this is 8 miles, and this angle is 39 degrees. <sighs> then it says, what is the total distance traveled? So we basically have D1 and D2. Right? I'm not going to use A and B. I'm going to use D1 and D2. We already have 8 miles, and we have this distance and that distance. Those are sides of a triangle. And it doesn't look like it's a right triangle. But the problem is, I don't know the, I only know one angle inside this triangle. So now I have to go back to my geometric relationships and see, can I figure out what those other angles are? Well, this one, if you guys remember the what you need to know, remember that day I had a sub and I gave you guys that thing? So if this is 39 degrees, this is at all 90 degree angles, right? Cardinal directions, quadrant system. So if that's 39 degrees, that means this one has to be? 51, right? Because these are what we call complementary angles. All right, so that's 51 degrees. But crap, what is this? How'd you figure that out? How'd you know that? I know. What is that relationship, though? That's what I'm asking. You're right. <coughs> Guys, if you have two north, if you have two north-south directions, those are parallel lines. When you have a line intersecting them, that's what we call a transversal. This relationship on alternating sides of the transversal interior of the two parallel lines is what we call alternate interior angles, right? Alternate interior angles are equal, right? Yeah. So therefore, this is 53 degrees as well. Now, if I know that's 53 degrees, can I figure out that one using complementary angles? Yeah. Again? From 180. Oh, um, yeah, but you still need to figure out what this thing. You still need to know that that's 53 degrees based on that relationship. Well, if you have this, how are you? Yeah, I see what you're saying, but you could do what you just did up there on the bottom, find the bottom end, and then. No, we only know we don't. What parallel lines with what? What is this parallel? Oh, it's, it's south. It's south and parallel. You see? Yes. So that's 39 degrees right. from south. So the angle on the bottom is also 39. This one. No, the angle on the bottom. Oh, this one. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I was going to get to it. Yeah, you did that first. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so, yes, yeah, you could do 39, then you could do, the, then you could do 180 and subtract from there. Okay, I got you. Um, but either way, I guess the point that I was trying, either way, you need to understand alternate interior angles, right? So, I think it's easier probably to subtract from 90, especially when you're talking to your neighbors, which you should probably move for groups anyways. Um, so, therefore, this becomes, what, 37 degrees? And therefore, this is 89 degrees. 88 degrees, definitely. See, I just got to keep, keep you guys honest. All right. Is everybody okay with how I drew the picture? Because that's just the step. I mean, guys, we haven't even done any, I mean, we did a little math. But we haven't done any pre-calculus yet, right? We just read a problem, a word problem, and then we broke it down, and we did a little geometry. 
All right, so now we recognize that this does not contain a right triangle, so therefore it's an oblique triangle. And the only thing we've learned with oblique triangles is we can use the law of sines. But to use the law of sines, you have to have a ratio. And you can see we have a ratio here to here, right? And we need to figure out d1 and d2. Now, we already have, d, we already have this angle right here, and we could easily subtract from 180 to figure out this angle, right? Which is what, 35 degrees? 39. 39 degrees? Because that's 180 minus 53 minus 88. Okay. But either way, let's just solve, let's just set up a ratio for both of them. So I'm going to say, um, so since we're solving for distance, we're going to put D on top. Would you guys agree with that? We're solving for distance, so let's put D on top. So let's do D1 all over the sine of 39 degrees is equal to, we're going to use this ratio here, which is going to be 8 over the sine of 88 degrees. Now I take my calculator. Did you guys take my calculator again? Seriously. OK, just give it, round it to the nearest thousandth for me. And then I'd love if somebody would second that answer. So d is equal to? 5.0376, so 8. Round it to nearest thousand. Did anybody else get that answer, or do I need to check it? Because if I don't have somebody else that confirms it, you got it? You have an issue? So you just multiply, you do 8 times sine of 39 divided by sine of 88. So that's D1. Now, should, could I use the ratio for D1 into my next answer? I could, but then I'd be using a calculated answer. And then I'm prone to now making some rounding errors. Agreed? So I don't want to use a calculated answer in, or a calculated answer in another calculation. So I am just going to go right into using D2. I'm going to use the same ratio, 8 over sine of 88. Right? Don't use calculated answers. Because what if you did get it wrong? Right? We don't want to use a calculated answer in there. So now we go and figure out D2. Sorry, that's D1. Do you guys see how also I'm using subscripts to differentiate these? Right? You're not just using D, because then they'd be the same. Yes? Uh, Is that rounded? Now, those are miles, right? But again, we're just using these answers not to find our final answer. We just want to make sure we apply units to our final answer. So remember, the total distance is going to equal traveled is going to be 8 miles plus d1 plus d2. And then when we get that in there, it's going to be why you don't want to have the eight. So what is the total travel distance traveled? Yes, that is correct. Good point. Yeah, you're just going to want a d1, d plus d2, right? I kind of read it and thought of one thing. But yeah, we just, I guess if they would have said, if they traveled all the way back to the original point, then you had an eight. Now, technically, though, did I add two of those answers, rounded answers, right? Yeah. So technically, I'll, I'll show you guys one thing that you can do when you're typing these. You've got to be careful with that. I mean, a lot of times what we like to do is just keep the full decimals. Don't round them and then combine them. What you want to do for this case is either keep the full decimal intact and add those numbers or store them in your calculator, which I'll show you guys later, which we'll do. Okay? Um, but that's technically what you'd want to do in this case. You want to be careful with rounding your answers and then finding them. But I didn't teach you how to do it. I was taking answers um, from you guys. So. Just be careful with calculating rounded answers.